I used to live in a house on the south side of town. It was a brand new development, so 270 degrees of my view was dump trucks and skid loaders and two by four skeletons of future homes. But the remaining 90 degrees of my view was of a small wooded area in a little pond off to the east. I used to love to go over to that pond and take pictures because I could make it seem like I was in a much more remote location than in my backyard on the south side of Sioux Falls. The sunsets were beautiful, and there was even a little bit of wildlife that would show itself to you if you held still for long enough. Beyond the pond and the trees, you could see for miles and miles with no visual obstructions aside from a few radio towers flashing off in the distance. One summer in particular, I saw an unusual amount of rainbows. Now, I'm not talking a little piece of rainbow in the sky. I'm talking full-on arches of color across the sky, and it happened often. Anytime there was a rainbow, I would grab my camera and a wide-angle lens, and I would run out of the house, and I'd take a picture of it. One summer evening, one of those beautiful South Dakota thunderstorms came through and dumped a ton of rain on us. Eventually, the storm moved on, like they quickly do, and the sun began to shine. Perfect rainbow weather, right? Having put my family on high rainbow alert earlier in the week, they knew what I was up to when I grabbed my camera and my coat and I ran out the front door. As I walked down my driveway and east towards the trees, there it was, just as I had suspected, boom, this big rainbow across the sky. I started taking pictures. And after a few minutes, I sensed a presence behind me. I turned around to look, and there, coming down the middle of the road, was a tiny yellow dot, barefoot, in her pajamas. It was my four-year-old daughter, Jonah. She had snuck out of the house after me when she saw me go. I had signaled for her, Jonah, go back inside, but of course, she didn't listen to me. So I went back, and I picked her up. I said, Jonah, what are you doing? She said, Dad, I want to come see the rainbow with you. I couldn't really argue with that. So I said she could stay as long as she stood close to me. And I kept taking pictures of the rainbow. And after a few minutes, I took a few steps back, and I crouched down to her level, and I framed her up inside this rainbow, and I kept taking pictures. There was still a lot of wind from the thunderstorm that had passed, and there was a lot of debris from these construction sites that was blowing around. And at one moment, moment, Jonah had stopped and pointed off in the distance to warn me about a piece of trash that was blowing towards us. I kept taking pictures. Soon the rainbow dissipated, as they quickly do, and Jonah and I made our way back home to review our impromptu photo shoot. Later that night, I posted this photo to all my social media channels, as Eddie's social media savvy dad would do, and I went to bed not thinking much of it. The next morning when I woke up, I had found that the photo had gone somewhat viral online and ended up on one of my favorite websites called Reddit. It had been viewed over a million times just that night. And on Reddit, it had made it to a place called Photoshop Battles. Now, this is a place where people can upload images and users can manipulate and Photoshop them in usually humorous ways, and people can upvote their favorites. Now, dozens and dozens of people had taken this picture of Jonah and Photoshopped it and sent it to us and posted them in this thread. And we got a pretty good kick out of it, me and my family. Now, they started pretty tame, right? There was Jonah leading her troop of Black Hawk helicopters into battle. Jonah and Michelangelo's The Creation of David. Jonah as a leprechaun trying to find her pot of gold. Pretty, pretty standard stuff. They got a little more complex from here, though. Jonah in The Wizard of Oz as Dorothy, Emerald City there in the background. Jonah leading some post-apocalyptic charge into battle on top of her tank. Jonah of Ark. <laughs> and probably my favorite of them all, Jonah leading George Washington and his men across the Delaware. My family and I got a really big kick out of looking all, at all these Photoshop pictures that people were making of our daughter. These strangers that we were interacting with from all across the planet, why were they taking time out of their evening to manipulate this photo of Jonah and send it to us? Because it was funny, because it was silly. Whatever the meaning was, it didn't really matter to us because it gave us a lot of joy. 
Now, I'm really glad Jonah didn't listen to me when I told her to go back in the house that night. Otherwise, none of this would have happened. We often think of little girls as cute and sweet and innocent, which I'm sure they occasionally can be. (laughs) But when I look at this photo of Jonah, I see someone who's powerful, someone who's sure of herself. I see a brave and a confident little girl. And as she grows up and starts to navigate this crazy world, I hope that she can see herself in that light. And like I said, my family and I got a really big kick out of all these interactions we were having with strangers from across the world. And that got me thinking about all the interactions I have with people in my everyday life, both online and in the real world. The people that I interact with on Twitter and Instagram, the person that I'm standing next to while I'm waiting in line to get my coffee, my dentist, the server at the restaurant, my auto mechanic, my daughter's teachers, the nice lady that always waves to me as I'm pulling into my driveway. These seemingly benign interactions that we have with people every day that make up our community both online and in the real world, they aren't insignificant. I've realized that they actually fill me up in my day. These short, positive interactions that we're able to have with each other, both online and in person, they can be a refreshing way to break up the monotony in our day. Now, through all this, I realize that there are a ton of people that I occasionally interact with online and even see in my day-to-day life that I've never actually talked to in person. We may have connected on a social media platform because we share mutual friends or a shared connection, but we've never actually stopped to acknowledge each other in passing. So I decided I wanted to change that. I made a decision that any time I saw someone out in public that I recognized from my online world, I would walk up and introduce myself, like, hello, I'm Wes Eisenhower from the internet. (laughs) I like that post you made about your dog wearing sunglasses at the lake and drinking a beer last week. How are you? Nice to meet you. Now this can sometimes catch people off guard, but generally it's led to a pretty positive interactions and helped me feel a deeper connection to my community online and in the real world. And then I decided I wanted to take it one step further than that. I made another decision that anytime someone came across my social media feed that I found interesting but that I'd never really talked to, I was going to send them a message and ask them if they'd be willing to meet me and have a coffee and a conversation. And if they were inclined to do so, let me photograph them when we were done. And I did this with over 40 different people, all from my local community, all people who I knew their names probably, and we would probably acknowledge each other and say hello in passing, but I did not know much more than that about any of these people. I wanted to see what it would be like to give these casual relationships a foundation to stand on, a platform for us to grow and become acquainted with each other in the real world. Now, I sat with each of these people for at least 30 minutes, but a lot of these conversations lasted for hours. And it's really kind of funny to see these pictures today because these are my friends. These are my colleagues. These are people that I interact with. These are people that I socialize with now. Now, I wish I had a grand takeaway from all these conversations that I had. But what I think I learned is a few things. We're all connected in some way. We're all just trying to get by navigating this crazy planet and trying to figure out how to live our best lives. None of us really know what we're doing. We're just doing it, myself included. Now, my family has since moved to a different neighborhood where I now feel closer to my work and closer to my community by proximity. So now, instead of scrolling past that on a social media timeline, I'm strolling past him in the park and stopping to visit for a minute with my family before moving on. And we know enough about each other from interacting online that we have a base to jump off of. I think about how what we know about each other from our online presence informs how we interact with each other in the real world while we're at the park or at the bar at the restaurant. Face-to-face communication involves more than just words. It involves body language and it tends to hold more emotional weight. Face-to-face communication can be difficult and lead to uncomfortable situations. But those uncomfortable situations can help create empathy and ultimately help us grow as people. 
Do I treat the people that I interact online differently than the people that I know I'm going to see in my day? I don't know. I think I do. But I also think that these interactions and relationships we have can be healthy and fulfilling. We're sometimes able to skip over the small talk and avoid discussing the weather and get straight to the things that are actually happening in each other's lives. Hey, I saw you just got that job promotion. Congratulations. Tell me about what you'll be doing now. Hey, I saw that cool art project you were working on. My kids love art. Tell me how you came up with that idea. But I think this can also be a double-edged sword. Sometimes our online connections provide us with more information than we care to know about each other. We can end up resenting people for how they represent themselves online. It's so easy to spend time doom scrolling on social media and leave feeling frustrated and filled with dread and overcome with FOMO. This powerful tool that we have at our disposal has the amazing ability to bum us out if we don't use it correctly. This isn't a new idea, right? It's like all things, there are good and there are bad. We can choose how to use it. But what if we were more deliberate about making our experiences online more educational, more joyous, and more inspiring? What if we curated our timelines to be a better tool to help us grow in our real lives? If we gave just a little extra thought about how we engage each other and purposely broadened our world perspectives, that could positively impact how we interact with each other in the real world. I also think it's important to embrace the simple things. If laughing with a bunch of strangers about how they Photoshopped my daughter into some ridiculous scenes and sent it to us via Reddit so my family and I could have a good laugh on a Tuesday evening, then that's what I'm going to do. And I would recommend you do the same if the opportunity presents itself. We could all use a little more silliness and absurdity in our lives, especially at this moment. And in this moment of time, when nearly every person on the entire planet is being affected by a global pandemic, relationships are inevitably going to look differently. But I also think that leaves us with an opportunity, both as people and as a community. This is a great moment to reinvent yourself. Who do you want to be when we fully emerge into the world again? If we put just a little more effort into thinking about the people on the other end of our social media experiences as real people, our communities would be a more connected place. And I would encourage you, the next time you're standing in line for coffee and you recognize the person next to you, to introduce yourself. Take a minute to get to know the people that you see in passing a little deeper. Because you never know. You could be standing next to Terry, or Ileana, or Sam, or Corey, or Mato, or Katrina, or Rahiwa, or Taylor, or Johnny, or Arlinda. And in my experience, all these people were worth taking the time to get to know, a little, get to know them a little better. Thank you.